getteractcoach.com, pinhole IOL explant, and then IOL exchange. So why not perform the twist and out technique here? So this is a patient who got this Aptera IC8 pinhole lens that central zones about 1.36 millimeters. And the patient's had this lens in for a few months and just cannot tolerate it. More on that later. Now he's using a Sinsky hook to try to get that lens freed up. You saw how we injected viscoelastic underneath the anterior capsule rim. Here we go, just a little bit of a dispersive viscoelastic to try to viscodissect the capsular bag open. Now the goal here is to separate the anterior and posterior leaflets of the capsular bag, opening it very gently, and we want to preserve this capsular bag. Now, did I tell you about the Cataract Coach podcast? The top podcast in all of ophthalmology. It will teach you the secrets to be successful. It's everywhere where you find podcast services. Now, going on the other side, again, slow, meticulous dissection here using a dispersive viscoelastic. Notice we have two pairs of TCs, 180 degrees apart. And the video is sped up at 2x so we can get to it quickly. And again, once you separate the anterior and posterior capsular leaflets, look, the eye wall comes up pretty easily. Now, this is an acrylic lens, but it's thicker than your average lens. And that pinhole effect, that round ring, the black ring, is within the eye well, and it adds an extra layer of thickness, and also it's a little tougher. So here now, using a spatula to just gently dissect the capsule open, and then once we get that haptic freed up, then again, we could bring that up also, and I want the entire lens up in the anterior chamber. Here it is, entire lens up in the anterior chamber, and now we can remove it. Now, the twist and out technique here is not great because the lens is extra thick, and it doesn't twist as easily. So I'm going to elect to use these micro scissors here and just cut the eye well. So again, here we go. Eyes full of viscoelastic. There's a big cushion of viscoelastic protecting the posterior capsule using the chopper here to help kind of grab onto the lens, and we're gonna cut it with scissors here. Now, I don't wanna enlarge the incision any more than we have to, and so here, what we're gonna do is cut it halfway or as much as we can, and then I'm gonna rotate the lens and cut it the other direction. I know, center of the camera, right? So here we go, a little more viscoelastic, it's always a good thing. Viscoelastic is your friend here because we have to protect and save that posterior capsule. Now, with this lens, we're gonna rotate it about 180 degrees, in order to get the scissors to cut the other part of it. And so now we'll cut through again, and there's a big layer of viscoelastic to protect the posterior capsule. Remember, if your scissors hit the posterior capsule, you could very well puncture it. You don't want that. So again, I'm holding the lens with the chopper there or the Sinsky hook, and then finish cutting it. There we've got two halves. Now each half can be pulled out of the eye through this incision. Nice and easy, grab that, pull it right out, and take your time there. And then when you pull the pieces out, I like to put them on top of the cornea and then put them together just to show to myself, yes, I removed the whole lens. There are no slivers that are left or remaining in the eye. Perfect. So now we can get that off the surgical field and we'll put our new lens in. In this situation, the patient's going to get a monofocal eye well, a three-piece silicone lens. So the patient had all kinds of dysphotopsias from the original lens. Part of the issue, I think, is that the patient in mesopic or scotopic lighting conditions, dilated past the outer ring there. So it dilated about five millimeters. Now allowed in light that caused lots of distortions. Patient also complained of some negative dysphotopsias. So putting in this three-piece Bausch & Lomb lens, the LI61A, which is a silicone lens, in the capsular bag is gonna help minimize any of those post-op issues. Again, this has a nice six millimeter optic and the silicone material has very little dysphotopsias. Taking out the viscoelastic here, you can notice both haptics and the optic are completely in the capsule bag. That looks fantastic. Let's finish up this case and call it a day. So yes, these lenses are great for the right patients, but it's not a perfect lens for every patient, especially be cautious in patients who dilate outside the part of the pinhole ring.